The night of November 25th began without warning, without any major public alert. And yet within minutes, Ukraine witnessed one of the largest combined strike operations since the beginning of the war. Shortly after midnight, radar operators across the country watched their screens flood with unprecedented activity, 486 airborne threats, all approaching from different directions, altitudes, and speeds. These weren't random missiles or isolated drones. This was a calibrated, multi-layered strike meant to test Ukraine's endurance, expose defensive weaknesses, and deliver strategic blows under the pressure of sheer volume. What happened that night reveals the evolving nature of modern warfare, the limitations Ukraine now faces, the increasing sophistication of Russia's strike doctrine, and the lessons NATO must pay attention to. On November 25th, Ukraine's Air Force reported tracking 486 air attack means, including 464 Shahed and Gerbera strike UAVs and 22 missiles of various types, four Kinjal aeroballistic missiles, seven Iskander K cruise missiles, eight caliber cruise missiles launched from the Black Sea, and three Iskander M ballistic missiles. The strike occurred in four distinct stages, each designed to support and amplify the next. The first stage was the drone flood. Hundreds of Shahed-type UAVs launched from multiple directions at extremely low altitudes and staggered timings, forcing Ukraine's air defenses to constantly reorient and engage. This wasn't simply an attack on infrastructure. It was a deliberate saturation designed to overload radar capacity, drain ammunition, and distract operators from the higher value threats that followed. The second stage began as Ukraine was busy dealing with the sheer volume of drones. Cruise missiles, Iskander K from ground-based launchers and Kaliber missiles from the Black Sea Fleet entered the battle space. These weapons flew low, used terrain masking, and approached in paths that exploited radar clutter created by the drones. Their targets appeared to be strategic. Energy nodes, communication infrastructure, storage facilities, and logistical hubs essential to sustaining Ukraine's military operations. The third stage introduced Iskander-M ballistic missiles. These missiles travel at high speeds, using steep trajectories and mid-course maneuvers to reduce interception probability. While fewer in number, their presence significantly increased pressure on Ukraine's defensive system, which by this point was already engaged, overwhelmed, and partially depleted. Finally, the fourth stage delivered the most advanced threats, four KH-47M2 Kinjal hypersonic missiles. These missiles, launched from MiG-31K aircraft at high altitude, reached extreme velocities and performed unpredictable maneuvers. Their timing was intentional. By the moment they entered the airspace, Ukraine's radar coverage, ammunition reserves, and reaction capacity had already been stretched to the edge. The combined effect of these four stages created a synchronized, layered strike that overwhelmed Ukraine's defensive architecture. In the immediate aftermath of the attack, Ukrainian emergency services were deployed across multiple regions to contain fires, restore power lines, and secure damaged facilities. Several energy sites, including transformer stations and distribution nodes, sustained significant damage leading to temporary power outages in parts of central and southern Ukraine. While Ukraine has not publicly confirmed large-scale civilian casualties, local authorities reported a number of injuries caused by falling debris, collapsing structures, and secondary fires triggered by missile impacts. The exact casualty count remains uncertain, as assessments were fragmented by the scale of the strike and ongoing rescue operations. The material aftermath, however, was unmistakable. Energy grids that had been repaired repeatedly since previous Russian strikes were once again destabilized. Smoke columns, emergency sirens, and temporary communication disruptions added to the night's chaos. Repair crews worked around the clock in freezing temperatures to restore essential services, a reminder of how critical and fragile Ukraine's infrastructure has become under sustained attack. 
Militarily, the strike forced Ukraine to reassess the distribution of remaining air defense systems, relocate certain batteries, protect critical storage sites, and appeal urgently for additional Western interceptors. The night of November 25th did not only break Ukraine's defenses, but also undeniably strained them, leaving behind a clearer picture of the country's vulnerabilities heading into winter. Ukraine later announced that its defenders had intercepted 452 of the 486 targets that night, including 438 drones and several crews, ballistic, and even hypersonic missiles. However, these figures have not been independently verified, and many of the claimed interceptions appear highly unlikely given the scale, speed, and complexity of the assault. There are several reasons Ukraine struggled, and reasons why the high interception numbers are contested. The first and most significant challenge is saturation. Air defense systems rely on radar tracking capacity, missile stockpiles, reload times, and operator decision-making. When hundreds of low-cost drones enter the airspace simultaneously, they consume an enormous amount of attention and ammunition, forcing defenders to choose which threats to prioritize. The second issue is cost imbalance. Ukraine cannot afford to fire expensive interceptors like Patriot or NASAM's missiles at cheap drones without draining critical reserves needed for higher tier threats. A Patriot missile can cost over $3 million. A Shahed drone may cost less than $30,000. Saturation attacks exploit this imbalance deliberately. The third challenge lies in physics. Intercepting hypersonic weapons or maneuvering ballistic missiles is exceptionally difficult because defenders often have only seconds to detect, lock on, and fire. Even the best systems struggle under those conditions. Additionally, cruise missiles often fly extremely low, using terrain-following routes that hide them from radar until the final moments. Combined with limited radar coverage, ammunition shortages, and worn-down systems after nearly three years of war, Ukraine simply cannot intercept everything. So why issue such high interception claims? Several explanations exist. Ukraine must maintain domestic morale, especially during prolonged conflict and winter power shortages. The government also seeks to demonstrate effectiveness to Western partners, reinforcing the argument for more Patriot batteries, more Iris-T systems, and more interceptor ammunition. High success rates, whether entirely accurate or not, help show that donated equipment is being used effectively. And finally, some discrepancies may result from the fog of war itself, where overlapping engagements create unintentional double counting. Regardless of intent, the numbers highlight the enormous strain placed on Ukrainian defenses. Until now, that's all for today and thanks for watching.